Defense made a motion for a mistrial. Prosecutor was up to some fuckery. Potentially damaging evidence, no basis for it. The judge specifically said, do not ask that question. Do not use that as evidence. She walked right down the path and asked the question. It may be over on Tuesday morning. Batman Bruce Wayne bitch snitch. Gerald Brooks, your constitution does not apply to me because I'm a sovereign citizen, a traveler on the land. I have a Mauryan empire or whatever. Because there's so fucking absurd. If you want to be a sovereign citizen, just do yourself a favor. Go to YouTube here and binge it. Every sort of sovereign citizen that's ever been Some clever dick on the internet didn't find the great loophole in all of the world's laws. <laughs> Bitch snitch. <laughs> God dang, you're right. <laughs> God dang, you're right. <laughs> Traveler on the land. Empire Traveler on the land Bitch Smith Moorish Empire God dang, you're right Traveler on the land Bitch Smith Hey everybody, good night, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. All that other stuff, I'm just glad, uh, whatever's going on, it's going on right here with me, right now, today. Uh, thank you so much to everybody on Replay, thank you so much for you too. On the Replay folks, remember to hit that like and subscribe while you're here. And if you're so inclined, there's a little super thanks button down there. You can, you can smash and say, hey, thanks, I really wish I could have given you a super chat, but I wasn't there. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, we do have. I bring that up because we do have a uh, a super thanks to to announce here. Uh, this was from yesterday's stream. Where is it? Uh, Aquamarine. Aquamarine gave a five. Uh, oh, that's a new one. A five CHF. Where the hell is a CHF currency? CHF to U.S. dollar. Oh, it's a Swiss franc. I knew that. Come on, I'm such an idiot. Put your put your head in gear here, buddy. Uh, speaking of buddies, hey, dog, stop that. Uh, <laughs> I would say five Swiss franc. Thank you so much for your your uh, super super thanks. Deeply, deeply appreciate all of the all of the super thanks. Thanks from Aquamarine. Well, thank you for for giving that there. Um, all right, we are here to today to talk about the Virgilio Aguilar Mendez case. As some of you may know, he was he had all of the charges against him dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, he was charged initially uh, with felony murder of a law enforcement officer. And all of that stemmed from an arrest <laughs> where they said that he, he was doing something suspicious. So the officer approached him. The officer stopped him, frisked him. And uh, then he he fled. He tried to get away. He, then he proceeded to resist arrest. Then he threatened the officers with a knife. And they eventually, after a grueling battle with the with this uh, barely eighteen year old kid, they got him subdued and put in the back of a police car. Then a few minutes later, the first officer on the scene that conducted the stop dropped dead. Based on that, they charged the kid with. 
felony murder of a law enforcement officer. The autopsy report came back and it was found that he died of natural causes. The officer had multiple health issues, multiple cardiac issues. He had an irregular heartbeat, uh, high blood pressure, hardening of the arteries, all of which were completely untreated. Uh, no medication for any of them. Um, he was recovering from bronchitis. He was also apparently a heavy smoker uh, he, and he just dropped dead. So because they said he died of natural causes, they go, oh, well, they're, they're, we, we can't charge him with the intentional murder. So uh, they dropped the charges down to aggravated manslaughter of a law enforcement officer. But eventually, you know, he was declared incompetent for linguistic, cultural, and intellectual reasons. No, no, no mental, no mental disorders. Um, they put him into an, an edu education program to try to bring him up to speed on uh, American culture, American language, and whatnot. Uh, the, in, you, to teach him a little bit about the system, uh, he he doesn't speak English. He does. He speaks very little Spanish. Understands a little more Spanish. Um. But he, his native language is mom. It's a it's an obscure Mayan dialect. Uh, <laughs> and this is spoken by about half a million people in the entire world. And after after he was released, uh, he was taken into uh, immigration custody uh, as as per the the procedures. He was in again, people like to bring ah, he shouldn't have been here illegally. He was legally on the street at the time this occurred. Previously, he was in the immigration detention uh, facilities. They released him to a cousin, and he was perfectly free to be on the streets, walking around while they were adjudicating his case. He went to all of his all of his hearings as he was required to do. The final adjudication is scheduled for this July, so until then, he was allowed to be out. But then this happened. They took him in, and because he was he was uh, picked up on this, that canceled his immigration release. So when he was released from, when these charges against him were ultimately dropped by the prosecutors. The, you know, after they finally pulled their heads out and released and released him, then he was immediately taken into the immigration detention facility again. And then he posted an immigration bond. I believe it was five thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. And uh, he's now back out uh, on the street again, legally and with full authority and authorization to do so until his immigration status hearing in July, at which point it'll be determined whether to uh, allow him to remain in the States or whether to deport mm -hmm. him. But he has filed a federal lawsuit against the law enforcement officers. And we're going to read that today. Now, there's uh, how many how many are here now? We've got 148 people here. Now, 207 had just updated. Every time I click on it, it updates. We've got 207 people here now. Um, what I want to do is... For the first, uh, I guess it's about 10, 10, 12 minutes, maybe 13 minutes, I want to go over the body cam footage one more time. I want to put the body camera here. If you've seen enough of the body cam footage on, and you're on watching this on replay and you want to skip ahead, skip ahead about 13 minutes from now. But I want people to see the, the body cam footage that may not have seen it before and don't want to go back and look for it. I couldn't find my own copy of it. So uh, what we've got here is from uh, MLS Law. David, David, he has it up on his site. I have, I have my commentary, my three-hour-long commentary on it. Uh, so we're going to be using the video from uh, David over at MLS Law, and uh, let's let's watch and, and and see see what you think if you haven't seen it before. It's a, it's kind of hard to watch. Now remember, while you're watching this, if you haven't seen it before, he was alleged to have fled from the police officers. He was alleged to have been struggling uh, and fighting back. And uh, if you read the arresting documents, he was trying to, there's one point like he, they were saying that he, he's got your gun. He's reaching for your gun. There's nothing where they say they were trying to, to take the taser away from him. Cause they tasered him. They tased him like nine times in the spine. Um, they said he had a knife and he was threatening them with it. All of these things were in the police report. Let's watch the uh, let's watch the body cam footage here, and then we will read in view of in view of the body cam footage and what happens there. We'll read the federal complaint. It's going to take a couple of days to get through because it's forty six pages long. Uh, Born sinner, he was neither. He, he was he was 
allowed to be released from the immigration detention center pending the resolution of his trial. We're not even going to get into whether he was legally on the street. Not Even the prosecution didn't say he was illegally on the street. He was legally on the streets at the time. That's the end of that discussion. If you want to see the whole reason why he was here illegally, go why, why he was here legally on the street, go back and watch the last video that I did on this. We're not going to waste time talking about whether he was legal or illegal here. We're not going to put up with the stuff because he was perfectly legally authorized by the federal government with papers and everything to prove it that he had every right to be on that street. So let's bring up the let's bring up the video. And then we will, okay, let's read the super chats first, then we'll watch the video because I, I don't want to make people wait here. Uh, you should call this taking care of a Mayan. The taking care of Mayan. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, John Schoen, for being the, the first the first chat of the day with the six euros and Tracy Fagan. You owe us dogs. Look, not while this video is on. Just wait. Hang tight. <laughs> Just hang tight. This, this is a, it's a serious video, and it's not really, you know, appropriate, I think. So just wait till the video is over. Uh, all right. Here, here's the, the body cam footage. Let's add that up there. And you're going to be seeing the, the first officer arriving on scene. I'm only going to make a very, very few comments. I'll try my best not to not to get enraged. I've got enraged every time we show this because it's so ludicrous. We're going to we're going to try not to do that this time. So let's go. Let me get this over here. He's got the body cam footage. Stop. Okay, he didn't even move. And the first thing the guy says is, stop. Now, remember, the guy doesn't speak English either, nor does he understand a lot of Spanish. Uh, and while you're watching this, regarding the legality of a stop, to it, the, the big case is Terry. It's, a, it's called a Terry stop. You, In order to detain someone, you have to have a reasonable, articulable belief that a crime has just been committed by the person, the person is in the process of committing a crime, or the person is about to commit a crime. And then if you even want to touch them to even do a cursory pat down over the clothes, you have to also have, not a hunch, you have to have a reasonably articulable belief that the person you are about to pat down is armed and dangerous. And what we have here is him sitting, well, standing there. He was sitting before, and then now he's standing, talking on, to his mother on the phone and eating dinner. And the first thing I says is stop. 422 St. Jones. 1012, single 13 P, Hispanic male, white t-shirt, uh, black shorts, Subaru, 16, 3576, should be phoning me. Stop. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, why when I was driving around? Yeah, yeah, oh, stop, stop! stop. Uh, eating, eating. Okay, but eating, why did you get up and walk away? Huh? When you saw me, you yeah. got up and walked away. Why? Yeah. Why? But right. you meet me, I hear you. You go for you drink in Where are you staying? Huh? Where are you staying? Sleeping? Yeah. Here? Yes. Well, why aren't you eating inside? That's he doesn't have to eat inside, you dick. What? It's all these bits and bits. Okay, I've got, I've got some coming. Okay, do you have any ID and identification? Uh, license? What? ID, identification. I, uh, yeah, yeah. In the room? Yeah. Okay, what's your first name? Huh? Your first name? I'm sorry, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Okay, do you have any weapons on you? Huh? Do you have any weapons on you? No. Well, you know what that is. Turn around, let me look at that. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. Bye. No. And if you notice, he, he's like, well, why? he looks at him like, why did you just grab me? And watch what the officer uh, does here. Don't walk no, away from me. No, no, sorry, sorry. Don't pull away from me. He didn't walk away I'm and he didn't for, pull away. Hands away from here. And right there, you'll, you'll see he says, I'm checking you for weapons. He doesn't have the legal authority to do that right now. Uh, and notice you, you know, people said, oh, he was reaching for the knife. In this pocket, we know that he has, I think, a lighter, maybe two lighters. He has... A, a wad of cash that he was going to be sending to his family. And he has a folded knife with a one inch blade that he uses for harvesting watermelon. But the officer does not have the legal right to touch him at this point because the officer has no reason to suspect he may be armed and dangerous. But notice the kid is not reaching for the knife. His hand is on top of the police officer's hand. He's trying, apparently, to stop the officer from getting into his pockets uh, where he has the money. And again, it's just a cultural thing. You, whether it figures into it or not, it's up to you to decide. Uh, 
he comes from a culture where the, his only interaction, his people's only interaction with the Guatemalan police is when they send hit squads to try to e exterminate uh, you know, <laughs> the, the, the Mayans and, and the other villagers. So anyway. No, no, Stop. No, no, no. Stop. No, no. Now those those two steps he took, those two steps he took are the only steps that he takes away from any officer ever. No problem, no problem. Give us your hands! Give us your hands! Is he going after your gun? There was no attempt whatsoever to go after the officer's gun. Uh, is he going after your gun? That is quite often cop speak for, I think he's going after his gun. We better beat the living shit out of him because he's going after your gun. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> See him no. resisting. No. Uh, he's, he, he was, they said he was violently resisting. He's curled up in a fetal position saying, no, 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 no. And then he asks for his family. Stop. Put your hands behind me. And uh, looking at that again, that's that's where he managed to to pull away and stand up and watch. He stands still. He doesn't run away. He's got these big scary police officers that has no idea why they're attacking him. He just stands up and he stands there until the other officer throws him on the ground. Now, one one last thing uh, to keep in mind during all of this, and then I'll go right back to the video. I promise. Um, I just wanted to show you, for those of you that haven't seen it, a picture of him leaving uh, the detention center with his lawyer. Uh, let's bring this down really quick uh, and bring up the share screen. There we go. This is him in the white T-shirt. He is five feet tall and weighs 115 pounds. And he's the one that's violently resisting the police officers and you know, trying to take away their guns and take away their tasers and to, to wave a, you know, to threaten them with a pocket knife. Uh, so yeah, this, this is the, the threatening guy, five feet tall. Yeah, the, and he weighs 115 pounds. So that's the guy. And watch him away here. When he st he stands up, he he gets away, and he just stands there, and then he's thrown to the ground again. <coughs> he's not resisting, not running. He gets chucked to the ground. It's on me, it's on me. Turn around. Yeah. Put your hands. That's Taze one. Oh, no, no. No. Use your hands. No. no hands. Huh? Hands. Hands. Lay on your stomach. <coughs> I'm sorry, not speak English. Lay on your stomach. Hey, stop. Stop. Hold stop. over. <coughs> stop. Stop. Hey, stop. Stop. You're gonna get it again. Huh? Stop. Give us your hands. I mean, family. Family. Hey, family. Hey, family. Yeah. Stop. Hey. Right, I got one. <coughs> hey. She's got my taser. Hey, oh. he's he's got my taser. He doesn't got your taser, dude. He's pushing the taser away from him so you don't keep blasting him with it. He's not got your taser. Let go of the taser. Stop. 
No, stop, stop. King Ginger, not tonight, brother. Yeah, Do not, stop. not tonight. Yeah. Please, Roll over. not tonight. Yeah. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. Hey. 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 That was left hand. Hey. Neil. I'm sorry. Lay down. I lay down. Stop. Hey. 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 Lay down. Hey. 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 <laughs> Lay down. I still got left. Put your hands on your back. Put your hands on your back now. Put your hands on your back now. Hey. Stop, stop. Um, hey, hey, shut up and listen. Huh? Put your hands behind your back. Hey, you you want to get tased? Hey. I'm glad for me. Find me. Your taste. Hey. Hey. There's one. That one? Hey. Hey. <coughs> He's getting up on his knees. He's, He's, He's got four cops Familia. on him. He's getting up on his knees. <laughs> Familia. Give me this arm now. Give me this arm. All right, give me the other. Okay, now he's in handcuffs. He's handcuffed at this point, and he's got officers kneeling on him. There's other camera footage that shows the, the guy that's kneeling on him. His knee just about, is about as big as the kid's back. <laughs> and what's going to happen here again real quickly what you're going to see happen here is um they're going to realize that he has this folded knife in his left hand. It's completely encased in his hand. It's, it's not a big knife. Like, you know, like they, like this buck knife. It was, it's, it has a one inch blade that was so small folded. You couldn't see it. It was completely enclosed in his hand folded in his left hand. The cops wrenched his right hand, damn near broke his wrist screaming, you know, drop it, drop the knife, drop the knife. But as soon as the officer said it in Spanish, Instantly, he dropped it. And it, it, he was saying, if you listen to the Spanish, he's saying, I need this for you know for cutting watermelon. I need this for the watermelon. So he wasn't threatening the officers with it. He was, you know, I guess, if, I guess the easiest thing to, to compare it to would be if you were like a mechanic and someone was trying to take your tools away from you. <laughs> you, you need them. no. He's still in handcuffs, still laying on the ground. And now, now they're. 
now they want him to let go of the knife. And again, this folded knife that can't even be seen because it's in his, it's enclosed entirely in his tiny little fist. They are con- they're not controlling the hand with the knife in it because they're afraid of it. They're wrenching on his right hand to try to get him to drop the knife in his left hand. I'm demonstrating clearly they're they're not afraid of this folded weapon. Although with the police report said that he was he was opening it and and threatening them with it. Uh, clearly didn't happen. They, again, they're they're controlling and nearly breaking his right wrist to get him to let go of the knife in his left hand. Uh, yeah. So this happens again a long time after handcuff. Water. See, he dropped it instantly as soon as they told him to drop the knife in Spanish. All right, well, that's 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 all we really need to watch of, of, of that because then it's just from different angles. Uh, but again, that's that served as the basis. Of, and you, the the officer dropped dead a few minutes after all of this happened. And yeah, he has Owen Wallace. He thinks he's going to work in the morning, so he he needs it. it it's sad. Uh, that's what happened. The officers eventually dropped the charges. And he's filed the, a, a a federal lawsuit against them. So let's uh, we're we're going to get into that right here real quick. Let's pick up the the other. Yeah, Tracy Fagan, you owe us dogs. Yes, thank you so much. We will we will get them here as soon as. Hmm. I guess we have them over here. We will we'll bring them up as soon as we start reading the the, the lawsuit. Trying to get them trying to get them in there. Kind of at a weird angle behind me here. Um. Okay, let's see. And ju- just, just uh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Let me. I'm working on the. Let's work on the doggo cam here, real quick. Here, here's here's my buddies. We we we. It's a bad. It's a bad. Uh, bad view. Let's see. Um, zoom in here a little. We can't zoom in on everybody. We gotta we gotta pick and choose because they're this six foot cable is stretched to its absolute limit. They're just in a bad. They're in a bad position. <laughs> we'll have to wait till they come back on over to the other side. Then I promise we'll bring them up. Let's see. If we can convince Strawberry to move over there. Dougie, come here. There you go. Lay down there on their nice, comfortable blanket, huh? Hey, there you go. Good. All right. They'll we'll get to them in a minute whenever we can. <laughs> they're they're being doggy tonight, just doing their own thing. They don't care about us. All right, with that out of the way, um, I guess we'll bring we'll bring them up here as long as we're as long as we're able. And there we go. <laughs> just too darn close to the camera. We're gonna go through and read the civil lawsuit now. Um, uh, sorry, I have to just type this thing here. Let's see. All right, here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. 
Let's see. All right, share screen. There we go. Oops. And again, for those of you just joining us, he was legally on the street at the time. Uh, if you go back and watch the last show you did, we showed the papers from the federal government itself authorizing him to be in the country, on the street, and doing all sorts of free stuff and enjoying all the freedoms that everybody else enjoys. Uh, so, yeah, the, you know, the, he was not on the street illegally at the time. Just keep that in mind. Now, here we go. Uh, we have we have a Gosney sighting. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Right. So uh, let's see. This is going to take us a couple days, maybe three days to get through because it's 46 pages. Uh, there, if I recall correctly, there's 14 counts against the uh, the law enforcement officers and the county. Let's see. All right, here we go. This is the United States District Court, Middle District of Florida, Jacksonville Division. Virgilio Aguilar Mendez, and that's how he pronounces his name. He, he, he pronounces it Virgilio, so hey, who am I to say that's not how you're supposed to pronounce it? Uh, <laughs> Aguilar Mendez versus St. John's County. That's the county where this took place. Robert A. Hardwick, in his official capacity as sheriff of St. John's County and his individual capacity as a St. John's County police officer. Michael Kunovich. Through his personal representative of his estate, this is the Kunovich is the officer that died. So he's he's suing the estate of the officer that dropped dead. Through his representative of his personal his personal representative of his estate in his official capacity as a St. John's County police officer, and his individual capacity as a St. John's County police officer. Okay, so officially and individually. And Gavin Higgins, also one of the people on the scene in his individual capacity as St. John's County police officer, and George Montgomery in his official capacity as a St. John's County police officer. Uh, yeah, would his family have to pay if 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 they're found li if if uh, Michael Kunovich is found liable for anything in here? Yes, the the money could come out of the estate. Uh, try to make this as, as big as possible. Uh, while the estate, if he wins, it takes money from his widow and children, right? Well, yeah. Um, do, do we, let's assume that the, you know, at the end of this, there's a finding that the police officer was personally responsible, personally liable for any of the charges in here. And he's awarded a certain sum of money. Uh, do we, if your if your rights are violated, does the person that violated your rights get off the hook just because they're dead? If he's still alive, that's still money you take away from the wife and kids. Uh, so you, whether the, whether the officer's alive or dead, the money's still coming out of the estate, out of, either out of the, his pocket while he's alive or out of the estate while he's dead. Uh, the results are the same. It's that's just uh, that happens every time. <laughs> that's 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 just a common thing. If you think about it a little bit, you know, then it's uh, it, it seems it's logical. And I, some of the, the, you know, the, so I don't have to stop every few seconds. I know Steve Gosney's here. As long as Steve Gosney's here, Steve, if you wouldn't mind, uh, f you know, fielding some of the, some of the other questions here, Steve Gosney knows way more about this than uh, just about anybody else on earth. So if, if you can answer some of the questions, please feel free and, and I would appreciate it. Plaintiff Virgilio Aguilar Mendez individually sues defendants, St. John's County, we can make this one stage. Oh, that is that is cutting it close. We're right up against the borders. Cool. Uh, so he sues defendants, St. John's County, a political subdivision of the state of Florida. Robert A. Hardwick in his official capacity. Okay, we just read all this stuff. Repeating it there for the preliminary statement. Here's a, here's some of the facts. The Magna Carta was issued in June 12, 15, and it was the first document to put into writing the principle that the government was not above the law. The writer of the Bill of Rights and state constitutions were inspired by concepts born in the Magna Carta. That a government should be constitutional 
that the law of the land should apply to everyone, even to a sitting county sheriff, and that certain rights and liberties were so fundamental that their violation was an abuse of government authority. People with limited English proficiency or have a speech barrier are often victims of police brutality, bias, or civil rights violations like here. And we, we, we saw that, I think we saw just recently in a case where a, a deaf guy was trying to sign his to sign that he was deaf and couldn't hear. And the officers are screaming at him. He's not obeying commands. They get a little bit physical with him. Meanwhile, his ability to talk is, is handcuffed behind his back. So this is not an inaccurate statement. A lot of times people with you know, hearing, with hearing problems, with uh, you know, verbal problems, with language barriers are victims in, because of you know, the police are into escalation mode, not de-escalation mode. People, in any case, the uh, point three here, the case stems from the events of May 19th, 2023, where Sergeant Michael Kunovich, a St. John's County police officer, illegally searched, seized, tased, and beat Virgilio Aguilar Mendez without any reasonable suspicion of any crime, without probable cause, without a contemporaneous execution of a valid search or arrest warrant, and without exigent circumstances. That sums this thing up very, very nicely. And Tracy Fagan with the two dollars says, "Of course, it's Florida." All right, of course it's Florida. We got there. There we go. Now, see how long Strawberry stays there. After the arrest, Sergeant Kunovich had a sudden heart attack at the scene and died. Uh, all right. I just have one quick thing. Please do not. Do not time out King Ginger, anybody, please. I would appreciate that if we just just don't, please. We we just don't. <laughs> we we like divergent ver viewpoints here. Uh, people know where the line is; they should. So that's just a request. All right, let's go. On. Let's, let's get on to zero zero drama on the on the stream here. After the arrest. Sergeant Kunovich had a sudden heart attack at the scene and died from natural causes. Not related from Aguilar Mendez. No matter, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office charged Aguilar Mendez with felony murder, a charge with a possible life sentence in a Florida prison. Sheriff Robert Hardwick made several public statements about Aguilar Mendez, all in an effort to cover up and blatantly deceive the public on a lack of Sergeant Kunovich's reasonable suspicion by alleging that Aguilar Mendez committed a crime trespassing. And in, in all of this, guess what he was never charged with? Guess what he was never charged with? Trespassing. D <laughs> Guess what was never, ever mentioned again? Trespassing. That's, a, you know. But in reality, there was never a trespass, nor a trespassing by the St. John's Sheriff's, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, nor the state attorney. So he was never officially trespassed. He was never trespassing, and they never officially trespassed him. The St. John's County Sheriff's Office had no legal basis to detain Aguilar Mendez. The events led to Aguilar Mendez's unconstitutional detention at the Volusia County Jail for 288 days without bond. Ultimately, on March 1st, 2024, the state attorney's office was forced to dismiss all charges because, among other things, the entire proceeding was in clear violation of the Fourth Amendment. There was no evidence for any crime underpinning the so-called reasonable suspicion. Now, let's look at the nature of the action. This is a federal civil rights action for damages. So those of you that are asking why it's in federal court, he's going to explain it here. This is a federal civil rights action. They violated his federal civil rights his constitutional rights, because guess what? Even if you're not a citizen of the United States, you still get all of the protections, basically, except for the Second Amendment. Uh, interesting fact. <laughs> it, it's people. People. You're, you're a person, whether you're a citizen or not. 
you get the benefit of the Constitution. Uh, the, this is a federal civil rights action for damages pursuant to the 4th and 14th Amendments of the United States Constitution enforced through the Civil Rights Act to redress the deprivation under color of state law of rights secured by the United States Constitution. There is also a state law for a state law action for battery, defamation, abusive process, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Here's the parties. Plaintiff Virgilio Aguilar Mendez is sui juris and is an adult person living in the state of Florida. Aguilar Mendez is Guatemalan with indigenous ancestry of Mayan descent. Defendant, hey, what's up, Nick? Nick Starro and Jad. Defendant St. John's County is a political subdivision of the state of Florida. The St. John's Sheriff's Office, SJ, SJCSO, is and was at all times material here to a county agency providing the vehicle through which the county fulfills its policing functions. The, the sheriff's office is not a legal entity. Therefore, claims against the sheriff's office are against St. John's County. Defendant Robert A. Hardwick is the sitting sheriff for St. John's County and is legally responsible for the over for over the operations of the sheriff's office, including but not limited to each officer under his jurisdiction. Sheriff Hardwick is sued in both his official capacity and his individual capacity. Defendant, the personal representative of the estate of Michael Kunovich, is sui juris. Upon information and belief, Sergeant Michael Kunovich was employed by the Sheriff's Office from 1997 to May 19, 2023, when he died from natural causes. Before his death, Sergeant Kunovich was sui juris and was an adult in the state of Florida. Sergeant Kunovich is sued in both his official capacity and his individual capacity. Okay, and defendant, Gavin Higgins. Okay, the, I, uh, in case people are wondering what, what, what sui juris is, it's, it's, the, it's a Latin term of art. It's used in civil cases, basically indicates that they're legally competent people. It's, it's an adult who has the capacity to manage their own affairs from a civil perspective. So that's, it, it just means they're, they're an adult and they can handle their own affairs. And upon information and belief, Sergeant Michael Kunovich was also employed. Okay, we got that. Before his death, Sergeant Kunovich was sui juris and was an adult in the state of Florida, sued in both his official capacity and his individual capacity. De Defendant Gavin Higgins is sui juris and is an adult in the state of Florida. Upon information and belief, Deputy Higgins has been employed by the SJCSO since January 2022. Until present, Deputy Higgins is sued in his individual capacity. And this is what lawsuits always do. They always lay out the parties, their relationships, and all that other stuff. Defendant George Montgomery is sui juris and is an adult of the state of Florida. Upon information and belief, Deputy Montgomery has been employed by the sheriff since May 2021. Until present, Deputy Montgomery is sued in his individual capacity. Subject matter jurisdiction. This, this, this is how come and why it's filed in the federal court. This court, the federal court, has jurisdiction over the subject matter in this action pursuant to 28 U.S.C., sections 1131, and because this action involves federal questions raised by the Civil Rights Act. They're claiming a violation of his federal civil rights guaranteed under the Constitution. So because a federal question is involved, the proper forum, the proper jurisdiction is the federal court for that area. Aside from the federal claims, this court has supplemental jurisdiction over the state law claim. So he said there was some, there was other state law claims, but the, the federal court also gets the supplemental jurisdiction over this. Because the court has original jurisdiction of the federal question, and the state claims are so related to the federal question claims that they form a part of the same controversy under Article 3 of the United States Constitution. Personal jurisdiction. The court has generated in personam jurisdiction. That means jurisdiction over the person. Personal jurisdiction over the defendant because they're in the state of Florida. That one should be pretty simple. <laughs> He's in Florida, so the Florida court has personal jurisdiction over his body. Venue is proper for this court pursuant to 28 USC because defendants reside in the same state. So you do personal jurisdiction, you do venue, and you do subject matter jurisdiction. You can hear the subject, it has sub, it has jurisdiction over the person, and it's in the proper court. As an independent and alternative basis, venue is also proper in this court, pursuant to 28 USC section whatever, because a substantial part of the events or omissions giving rise to the claims 
accrued in St. Johns County, Florida. More specifically, the claims accrued around the state road. This is where it happened. The Jacksonville division of this court is proper pursuant to local rule 1.04 because the claims accrued in St. Johns County, Florida. General allegations. Aguilar Mendez was raised. Here's the language barrier. These are the problems with the, the language. And you know, Yoda is, is having his two minute struggle over there. Ignore the dog barking. Aguilar Mendez was raised in a small rural village, Colotenango, in the mountains of Guatemala. His native language is mom, not Spanish or English. Mom is an ancient Mayan language spoken by the Mom people who are indigenous to the highlands of western Guatemala and eastern Chiapas, Mexico. Chiapas or Chiapas, yeah, however you want to pronounce that. Mom is one of several Mayan languages spoken in Guatemala, along with uh, these other languages that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. The Mom language is spoken by around 500,000 people in Guatemala and Mexico, and it is an important part of the cultural identity of the indigenous people. Mom is used in a variety of settings, including at home, in the community, and in religious ceremonies. While a sentence might be phrased in a specific manner in mom, its translation into other languages, such as Spanish or English, can take on a different structure, maintaining the essence, but adapting to the linguistic norms of the target language. See, this is, a, this is something that's very interesting. Anybody speaks two languages. You know it's, it's difficult to translate things directly. Uh, you know, I mean, how would you translate snow to someone who's never seen snow? Uh, a good example that I always used went way back in the day when I was a little, cute little Mormon missionary here in, in Korea, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Bible where it talks about the, uh, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. In the English Bible, Koreans don't really have the, you know, the turtle dove, the snow white dove thing. They have pigeons. So it's actually translated as pigeon in, <laughs> in, uh, in, in the Korean language Bibles. So that you, you you adapt the language. It takes on, you know, there's totally different sentence structure. And it, it, it's a kind of often a struggle to translate something correctly. Aguilar Mendez entered the United States with hopes to work and send money home to his mother and father for money to buy corn for his younger brothers and sisters to eat. He moved to Florida in or about September 22nd, specifically moving to St. Augustine in or about May 13th, 2023, and then resided at a Super 8 motel. In St. Augustine, Aguilar Mendez gained employment in the farms, having harvesting watermelons and peppers. This leads up to the incident. The incident is uh, after completing his work day on May 19th, 2023, Aguilar Mendez arrived back at the Super 8 Motel. At around 8 p.m. on the same date, Aguilar Mendez walked to a Chinese restaurant in the vicinity to buy his dinner. Back at the Super 8 Motel, he decided to eat his dinner outside, close to the pool area. Again, it's May 19th. It's Florida. It's probably a very, very lovely evening. So while eating, he saw a, a sheriff's office, a sheriff's officer driving by, which was later determined to be Sergeant Kunovich. Aguilar Mendez then got up to buy a soda at the gas station convenience store, which is minutes from the Super 8 Motel. At approximately 9 p.m. on May 19, 2023, Sergeant Kunovich self-initiated a call for service to the vicinity. He was not called to the vicinity. Nobody complained about the brown man sitting on the street corner at 9 p.m. Nobody. He just, he did it himself uh, in regard to a, quote, suspicious person who was a Hispanic male. And again, a suspicious person does not just think, oh, this person looks suspicious, does not give you the right to detain them or to pat them down. Sergeant Kunovich unconstitutionally profiled Aguilar Mendez. Uh, you know, brown kid sitting on the street corner at night looks suspicious. Sergeant Kunovich's self-initiated call did not identify any possible crimes that he witnessed. That's very important because they, they said, you know, he was, he was the, they suspected him of trespassing. He never mentioned anything about trespassing in his initial call saying that he was going to go investigate. Kunovich exited his patrol vehicle at 9.04.56 p.m. The incident was videotaped by Sergeant Kunovich's body cam. The sheriff's office refused to produce the body cam footage until they were forced to do so through a legal process. That should, that's, uh, that should raise a few little suspicions as well. <laughs> why wouldn't they why wouldn't they release the body cam footage? Well, we know why because we saw it. 
Sergeant Kunovich was alone. He did not have another officer with him. Sergeant Kunovich approached Aguilar Mendez while he was walking between the Super 8 Motel and the gas station convenience store. The area was well lit. Sergeant Kunovich did not witness any crimes in that area between the Super 8 Motel and the gas station convenience store. Again, he had to have committed a crime, in, be in the process of committing a crime, or be suspected of, of imminently committing a crime. Uh, none of which happened. Aguilar Mendez was on the phone speaking with his mother when Sergeant Kunovich stopped him and immediately seized him on the north side of the State Road 16. On the call with his mother, Aguilar Mendez in mom stated that he did not understand why Sergeant Kunovich was approaching him. Aguilar Mendez was walking on a public sidewalk and speaking with his mother, which is not a crime. When Sergeant Kunovich seized Aguilar Mendez, he stopped and did not try to flee. Aguilar Mendez was confused as to why Sergeant Kunovich stopped him. Unlike hundreds of other cases where the police officer gets out of the patrol vehicle and begins to question the suspect in a courteous and calm manner, Sergeant Kunovich can be heard on his body cam immediately yelling at Aguilar Mendez in a very aggressive manner. Facts. Uh, you know, Tracy Fleming said, of course, it's in Florida. We, I believe we already read that one. But hey, you get a twofer. And it's Nick Starro. Thank you so much, Nick Starro. Direct translation. Direct translations are bad. Uh, uh, it, insert some Swedish, some Swedish vowels there. A stream. And in the stream, there is an island. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right. Thank you for the super chats. Let's. Let's get going. Okay, you, are you, strawberry is still there. Good. All right. So let's get down into the the actual contact and the the bad stuff that went down here. Sergeant Kunovich unnecessarily elevated the situation by saying, "When you saw me, you got up and walked away. Why? Why?" Aguilar Mendez gestured, eating tienda and drink store and drink, in the direction of the gas station con convenience store. Uh, in response to Sergeant Kunovich's commands and stated, I'm sorry, no speak, no speak English. Sergeant Kunovich did not speak mom nor Spanish. It was clear to Sergeant Kunovich that Aguilar Mendez had limited English proficiency and Sergeant Kunovich made no attempts under Sheriff's Office Policy 81.3, communication with deaf, hearing impaired, and limited English proficiency, signed by Sheriff Hardwick himself. So he, he made no attempts to communicate with Aguilar Mendez in any other language. A true and correct copy of the uh, policy 81.13 is attached here to as Exhibit A. Without provocation or justification, Sar Sergeant Kunovich then physically seized Aguilar Mendez without any reasonable suspicion of a crime, misdemeanor, or felony and illegally searched Aguilar Mendez's person. Aguilar Mendez did not consent to Sergeant Kunovich's search and seizure. In the body cam video, Sergeant Kunovich grabs Aguilar Mendez's arm and says, don't walk away from me, even though Aguilar Mendez never tried to pull away from Sergeant Kunovich at that moment or before. Aguilar Mendez is repeatedly heard on video saying in broken English, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Aguilar Mendez was afraid of Sergeant Kunovich. For the Hispanic community, there is a predisposition to be afraid of police, especially if you're if you're from Guatemala and and from one of the Mayan villages, which are sort of the target of a genocidal you know, <laughs> uh, extermination death squads. Um, Sergeant Kunovich then tased Aguilar Mendez. Okay, Sergeant Kunovich then threw Aguilar Mendez to the ground violently. Sergeant Kunovich then tased Aguilar Mendez several times. Aguilar Mendez did not understand why Sergeant Kunovich was trying to restrain him. When attacked by Sergeant Kunovich, Aguilar Mendez began to resist arrest in a mild and nonviolent manner out of fear. Uh, I hang on here. I, 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 I mentioned earlier, please do not time out King Ginger. Don't, don't do it again, please. I, I don't know how to just please do not do it anymore. Thanks. Uh, I hope it's clear. <laughs> I, I hope it's clear. We're not going to do that anymore. All right, let's, uh, let's continue on here. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Just please don't. When attacked by Sergeant Kunovich, Aguilar Mendez began to resist arrest in a mild and nonviolent manner out of fear. 
Deputy Higgins was the first deputy to arrive at the scene after Sergeant Kunovich. Deputy Montgomery was the second deputy to arrive at the scene. Deputy Higgins put Aguilar and Mendez in a chokehold. According to SJCSO policy 1.8, response to resistance signed by Sheriff Hardwick himself, chokeholds are prohibited unless lethal force is justified. A true and correct copy of the policy 1.8 response to resistance is attached here as exhibit B. There was no justified lethal force by Deputy Higgins at the scene. Deputy Montgomery pulled Aguilar Mendez from his throat and body slammed Aguilar Mendez. Deputy Montgomery then repeatedly hit Aguilar Mendez's left arm and left shoulder. In addition, he delivered multiple knee strikes to Aguilar Mendez. Unable to understand the brutality of the officers, Aguilar Mendez began to cry out for his family. In the video, he says several times, familia, and if your family, and in response to commands, says he does not understand or speak English. <laughs> Janet Burris with a five dollar super chat says, "I believe Nick just quoted Old McDonald." <laughs> E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> that was funny. That was good. In the video, Aguilar Mendez can be heard screaming in pain when he is tased six times by Sergeant Kunovich over two minutes. Without question, Aguilar Mendez did not understand the purpose or reason for the officers to pile on him, to physically strike him multiple times, and the repeated use of a taser by Sergeant Kunovich. Aguilar Mendez is around 5 feet and weighs approximately 115 pounds, and was beaten by Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery. The encounter was with excessive force. Deputy Higgins and Deputy Montgomery placed handcuffs on Aguilar Mendez on his back. Aguilar Mendez remained calm and complied with each of the officer's commands as directed without incident and did not at any point physically or verbally threaten the officers. At the time of the arrest, the sheriff's office did not give Aguilar Mendez his Miranda rights. Yeah, oops, that's a, that's a problem. They didn't give him his Miranda rights, nor did the sheriff's office attempt to obtain an interpreter for Aguilar Mendez pursuant to policy 81.13 so he could appropriately understand the rights that he was waiving by giving his answers. After the arrest was complete, Detective Brian Armenta and, and Deputy Mateus Alves responded to the incident. Deputy Armenta searched Aguilar Mendez's person and discovered a small pocket knife in Aguilar Mendez's shorts pocket, which was never used or exposed during the incident. Aguilar Mendez had the pocket knife because he uses the knife for his work as a harvester. He can be heard in the video stating that he has the knife for watermelon. Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery did not know about the small pocket knife until after the arrest was done and Aguilar Mendez was in handcuffs. The sheriff's office did not find any illicit substances on Aguilar Mendez's person, nor were there any illegal items in his room at the Super 8 Motel. Aguilar Mendez has no prior criminal convictions and no prior arrests. Okay, that provides us with the very, very basic backgrounds, with the background facts of this. Now, let's look into the, into the uh, little, little details here. The investigation of Sergeant Kunovich's death, the aftermath, and the uh, NOLA prosecution, which is the, the no prosecution. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll bring back Dog Cam when, when the dogs come back. <laughs> if they come back. <sighs> this, this case, this, this is a frustrating case. It really is. As, as someone who has lived in, in a, a, a country with a different language and a different culture for be 36 years-ish in December, I mean, in, in September, you know, it, it would be damn scary to be in a situation where you were suddenly cops just roll up on you, start screaming at you in a foreign language, start grabbing at you, throwing you on the ground, tasing you six times, and you know, employing all sorts of pain compliance techniques through the tasers and then you know, damn near breaking his right arm. 
it's it's rough. And then to find out later that they've lied in their police report about you, and then they won't give you, you know they've lied, but they won't give you the body cam footage so that you can prove they lied. About 10 minutes after the arrest was complete, 10 minutes, they said that you know, it was it was darn near instantaneously, moments after he dropped. But it was about 10 minutes after the arrest was complete, and Aguilar Mendez was in the patrol car. Sergeant Kunovich, who was 52 years old, had a sudden heart attack at the scene and was pronounced dead. Uh, Melanie Shiler says, I feel so bad for that poor man. Someone better apologize. Well, they, well, if, if this lawsuit has anything to say about it, they're going to apologize with uh, with lots and lots of money. Um, we've currently got 431 people here. Uh, that, that snuck up on me. Last time I checked, it was a little over 180. Well, welcome all 400 million people that are here that are here watching. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I notice we've got 430 people and 266 likes. It's like 200 of you haven't done your job. Get down there, smash that, smash that, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. If you have, double check to make sure you have. And then take our like and subscribe poll today. Today's like and subscribe poll is how many zeros should be at the end of the Mendez Civil Suit Award? So far, 12% of you, well, let's take it from the top. So far, 17% of you, that's almost one in five, say none, give him nothing. About 12% of you say he should get at least five zeros. 16% of you say he should at least get 16% of the zeros. And 55% of you say he should get all of the zeros. All right, we'll, we'll check into the end of the stream and see how that's changed with 55% saying he should get all of the zeros in this federal civil complaint. Um, I don't think it's going to change much beyond that, but let's see how it looks at the end here, about an hour an hour or so from now. Um, while, we're, while we're here, <laughs> King Ginger, I, I am the god of mediocrity, you're absolved. Uh, I love you, Jeff, you're a good man. I'm sorry for the stream going a bit off the rails. That's not my intention at all everybody's chill now. Everybody's calm. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody gets along. We all love you. And thank you so much, King Ginger, for participating in your own sweet and special way. <laughs> you know, I love you and everybody else loves you. Everybody deep breath. This is a, this is a triggery sort of thing. This is a, this is a tense, delicate subject for, for people to watch, for people to experience. So sometimes you get, you know, people get a little bit, a uh, little bit excited on both sides of the equation. If there is two sides of the equation, there might be more than that. But, you know, we, we all exactly, David Nelson, good for you for spotting that. Uh, you know, we, we get a little bit excited. Everybody, you know, just, we, we've all taken our deep breath. We've all done our things. We're all, all back on the same page. But, you know, opposing opinions are welcome. It just is, you know, anyway, let's, we're, we're good. I love everybody here. You all love each other. Peace out. Sixteen uh, percent of the zeros. Legendary racing. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, hey, what's up? Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon's here as well. It's been a minute, brother. How you doing? All right. Back to the investigation of the death of the officer on the scene. The sheriff's charged Aguilar Mendez with murder of a police officer during the commission of a felony pursuant to Florida statute uh, section 782.04 and resisting a police officer through the use of violence pursuant to this federal statute over here. Between late May 2023 and mid-July, the state of Florida investigated the events of May 19th and the death of Sergeant Kunovich. Well, on June 2nd, 2023, the state attorney's office sent several cases to the St. John's County Medical Examiner, Dr. Wendelin Sneed. Oh, Dr. Sneed, don't be a Sneed. She's, she's, she's Sneeding. Don't be a Sneed. Dr. Wendelin Sneed. We, we need Radix Verum here. We need Christina here to, to give her Sneed the comments to review and to rely on her opinion as to Sergeant Kunovich's cause of death. Five days later on June 7th, 2023, Dr. Sneed sent her written autopsy report to the sheriff's office. Dr. Sneed's report opines that Sergeant Kunovich's death was natural caused by an irreg irregular heartbeat due to arterial sclerosis, hardening of the arteries and hypertensive cardiovascular disease. 
Dr. Sneed also cited possible emotional stress as a contributing cause as a result of a review of the cases that the state attorney's office sent to her on June 2nd, 2023. However, there is no objective standard. And I mentioned this at the beginning when, when we first went over the, the autopsy report, uh, you there's no standard on possible emotional stress, what that means. And she wasn't there to witness any of it. She doesn't know whether it was emotional stress or not. She has no idea on a deceased person. The statement is subjective at best to build a story that Aguilar Mendez caused Sergeant Kunovich's death. Sergeant Kunovich's irregular heartbeat was an unknown condition that was not foreseeable to anyone, including the sheriff's office. On July 23, 2023, the state attorney's office dropped the murder charge and then charged Aguilar Mendez with aggravated homicide by culpable negligence pursuant to Florida Statute 943-1014 and resisting a police officer through the use of violence pursuant to Florida Statute 843.01. As expected, after Sergeant Kunovich's death, Sheriff Hardwick tried to spin the story in the favor in the sheriff's office's favor with several inaccurate facts, including stating that Aguilar Mendez was trespassing at a permanently closed business. That's where that's where the first assertion that there was any trespassing involved. He was trespassing at a permanently closed business. Sheriff Hardwick continued by stating that Sergeant Kunovich said, hey, why are you on this property trespassing in response to Aguilar Mendez? Uh, see Jack Sheriff Violence Against Police Officer press conference. Uh, we, we, we might watch these press conferences and all these other links later. But uh, Sergeant Kunovich's own body cam excel itself clearly negates these facts. The statement, these facts. The statement of trespassing was nothing more than an unconstitutional pretextual stop with racial bias, and there is no evidence that Aguilar Mendez ever entered the abandoned building between the Super 8 Motel and the gas station convenience store, nor was there any evidence that there were, a there were any posted signs regarding trespassing by the owner of the abandoned building. Trying to bring you that a little bit here. And I see we're kind of cutting off the side there, and I want to make sure we don't cut off the side there. All right, as long as we're paused here, let's take this time to, to read what we've got. Nick Starro says, your thumbnail is a bit lame. It should say, migrant sues dead cop and he should win. <laughs> Thank you, Nick, for your, your strong opinion. Uh, Tracy Fagan with a $5 super chat. I could see this happening to my son who is deaf. He can read lips. Or, or sign language, but if you don't even give him a chance, and he is born here, exactly. You know, it, it, you don't have to be a foreigner. You don't. It, it can happen to anybody. Thank you so much for for your support, Nick and uh, and Tracy. We appreciate it. Let's get back into this thing here. There's a, there's a lot to cover. Like I said, it's gonna it's gonna take at least one more day to get through. Whether that's Friday or Tuesday or something, uh, I don't know. But we're not gonna get through all 46 pages today. <laughs> that's that's for sure. Additionally, the body cam from Sergeant Kunovich himself never states trespassing as the basis for his reasonable suspicion. To this day, the sheriff's office has never cha never charged Aguilar Mendez with trespassing. We've said that uh, we said that a few times. We, we we may have mentioned that several times. The sheriff's office also produced a 44-page incident report that likewise does not allege trespassing as the basis for Sergeant Kunovich's so-called reasonable suspicion. Go way back. We have a, we have an Aguilar Mendez playlist here. Go way back into that. You'll find uh, that we went over that document. I believe all 44 pages of it. So you can go back and check that out if uh, that's something you're interested in. We've got all of our Aguilar Mendez playlist things going there. So check those out. The sheriff's office never had reasonable suspicion to stop and seize Aguilar Mendez when Sergeant Kunovich approached Aguilar Mendez. In the May 25, 2023 press conference, Sheriff Hardwick stated that all that Aguilar Mendez needed to do was comply and that the body cam footage will come out and show you it was by the book, textbook, legal aspect, doing his, Sergeant Kunovich's job to the best of his ability and duties. In the press conference, 
Hardwick said that all he had to do was comply and that the body cam footage will come out and show you that it was all done by the book. Textbook, legal aspect, doing Sergeant Kunovich's job to the best of his ability and duties. That's that's kind of a laughable statement, isn't it? We've, we've seen the video and it, and it proved none of those facts. At least to me, some of you may agree with him, but uh, with the sheriff, but I don't. Obviously, that statement is divorced from the fact that the sheriff's office never gave Aguilar Mendez any assistance on the language barrier between Sergeant Kunovich, including the sheriff's own, own policies on dealing with limited English proficiency. The This is the policy here. The agency makes reasonable accommodations for persons with limited English proficiency by using a designated interpreter service via telephone. Deputies must consider an individual's mental, physical, and other incapacities. Not should, might, or probably might want to consider. No, deputies must consider. Deputies also must, when feasible, consider whether a person's failure to comply with a deputy's command is due to a medical condition, mental impairment, physical limitation, developmental disability, language barrier, drug interaction, behavior crisis, or other factors beyond the individual's control. Again, let's take out all the extraneous word. Deputies must, when feasible, consider whether a person's failure to comply with a deputy's command is due to language barrier. It's clearly reasonable and feasible to consider that, especially when he says, I don't speak English. Uh, that should be a pretty good clue that there might be a language barrier. In these situations, deputies should consider whether specific techniques or resources would help resolve the situation without force. On November 21st, 2023, Aguilar Mendez filed a motion to set bond. On December 29th, 2023, the state court entered an order finding Aguilar Mendez incompetent based on his language barrier. Aguilar Mendez does not have any mental illness nor an intellectual disability. However, the state ordered that Volusia can't... Okay, Previously, it was already that he may have a, a, an intellectual disability, that he, some sort of learning disability. It's clear he didn't have much of a formal education. I believe they said the, the equivalent of, of, a, of a Guatemalan sixth grade education, if I recall correctly. I may be remembering things incorrectly. But anyway, Aguilar Mendez does not have any mental illness or intellectual disability. However, the state court ordered that the Volusia County Branch Jail or Medical Designee shall administer physician-prescribed psychiatric medications. See, we wondered about this. The first time we saw this order, we were wondering, they, there, nobody, nobody alleged that he had any mental disabilities at all. But yet, they said that he, would, he should, uh, he must take these prescribed medications, whatever medications are prescribed by the doctor. We wondered about that, why that was in, I thought it was just, it was a, I thought it was just mistakenly kept in there because when they do these orders, they use, they call them boilerplate, boilerplate wording. It's just forms. You fill in, you adjust the form accordingly. I thought it was just language that was left in the form uh, that they just didn't take out. Apparently not. A true and correct copy of the order is attached here to us, Exhibit C. The order is based on Aguilar Mendez's limited English proficiency, CID. On March 1st, 2024, the state attorney's office dismissed all charges against Aguilar Mendez by no low prosecution, which is you know, no prosecution. Let's call it non-prosecution if this word ever comes up again. In the filing, the state attorney gratuitously stated, arrest sufficient. That filing does not negate the fact that the St. John Sheriff's Office and the state's attorney never had credible evidence to unconstitutionally detain Aguilar Mendez for 288 days in Volusia Jail. A true and correct copy of the non-prosecution is attached here to his Exhibit D. All, all general and statutory conditions precedent to this action have either occurred or have been waived by operation of law. Aguilar Mendez properly exhausted his current federal administrative remedies prior, prior to filing this action. In addition, Aguilar Mendez will bring additional state claims against St. John's County as well, pursuant to Florida Statute 768.286. In the Florida Department of Financial Services, oh, if the Florida if the Florida Department of Financial Services denies his state claims against St. John's County and Sheriff Hardwick in his official capacity, the Prison Litigation Reform Act does not apply as Aguilar Mendez is not a prisoner within the meaning. Okay, this is this is all just formality wording. The undersigned counsels are entitled to recover recoverable fees, so they want their fees in it. In addition to whatever they are, they're asking the court to award Mendez, they also want their fees to come out of the pockets of the defendants. 
reasonable recoverable fees in this action pursuant to Civil Rights Act. Count one. Now we get into the specific allegations of wrongdoing by the county and the officers involved. Violation of the Fourth Amendment, Unconstitutional Search and Seizure, Civil Rights Act 42 U.S.C., Section 1983 at Sex 8, Sergeant Michael Kunovich in his official and individual capacity. Now, again, this is where we get into the specifics. And I believe there's 14 counts. Aguilar Mendez re-alleges the allegations set forth in paragraphs 8 through 12 above, 8 through 112 above, as though thoroughly, as though fully alleged herein. Again, just that's just standard textbook wording that people put in there because you know you got to cross all your T's and dot all your I's. All at all material times, Sergeant Kunovich acted as a sergeant and directly participated in violating Aguilar Mendez's 4th Amendment rights. Uh, Mexican Vader says since this is a federal case, does this go to does this trial go to a jury or a judge's decision? They've asked for a jury trial. They've asked for a jury trial in this case, so they'll they'll get a, a federal jury. Sergeant Kunovich was a person within the meaning of the Civil Rights Act. Well, good good thing that there's a Civil Rights Act to define what a person is in case we were wondering whether Sergeant Kunovich didn't quite meet the definition of personhood or not. Uh, at all times, at all material times, he acted under color of state law as an agent of St. John's County and within the scope of his employment and authority as a duly certified law enforcement officer of the Sheriff's Office. Sergeant Kunovich acted pursuant to the uh, Sheriff's Office bias policy, tri- bias policing policy, which allowed Sergeant Kunovich to stop Aguilar Mendez without reasonable suspicion. This is an interesting thing, bias policing policy. So he's saying that the, the bias policing policy allowed Sergeant Kunovich to stop him without reasonable suspicion, as that policy only protects citizens, not non-citizens like Aguilar Mendez. Well, let's see where this goes. That's an interesting statement. It is the policy of the St. John's County Sheriff's Office to patrol in a protective manner to aggressively investigate suspicious persons and circumstances and to actively enforce the motor vehicle laws. It is also the policy that citizens will only be stopped or detained when there exists reasonable suspicion to believe that they have committed, are committing, or are about to commit an infraction of the law. It is this protective and proactive enforcement order that keeps our citizens, our streets, and our highways safer. It also enables us in detecting and apprehending criminals. All laws shall be enforced equally regardless of race, color, ethnicity, sex, physical handicap, or religion, and biased policing shall not be tolerated in enforcement efforts. The standard is established in accordance with Florida Statute 3015. Sheriff's Office policies prohibit biased policing, and members are responsible for ensuring that all citizens of the community are treated with dignity and respect. Well... That's interesting. Sergeant Kunovich did not have reasonable suspicion to search Aguilar Mendez's person. Sergeant Kunovich did not have reasonable suspicion to seize Aguilar Mendez. Sergeant Kunovich did not have probable cause to search Aguilar Mendez's person. Sergeant Kunovich did not have probable cause to seize Aguilar Mendez. Sergeant Kunovich did not have an arrest warrant for Aguilar Mendez. Sergeant Kunovich did not have a search warrant for Aguilar Mendez. On May 19th, 2023, after Aguilar Mendez's arrest, Deputy John Newman filed and certified an arrest report for the Sheriff's Office stating that based on body-worn camera footage, deputy statements, and the defendant's post-Miranda statements, probable cause has been established to arrest Aguilar Mendez for the charges. However, Deputy Newman intentionally misled the judge by only giving him the sworn complaint and ignored the body-worn camera footage. He only, Deputy Newman, when, when asking for this arrest warrant, only gave the judge the sworn complaint that's prepared by the police officers. They didn't give the judge the body cam footage. Very interesting. 
that Deputy Newman mentioned in his report. The body cam worn footage video evidences that there was no probable cause to arrest Aguilar Mendez, making the arrest unlawful. A reasonable officer would have known that searching or seizing a person without reasonable suspicion or probable cause constitutes a violation of the Fourth Amendment. The search and seizure of an innocent person without probable cause, without a contemporaneous execution of a valid search or an arrest warrant, and without exigent circumstances, is a clear Fourth Amendment violation, far outside any narrow exception permitted by the Supreme Court precedent. Aguilar Mendez had both a subjective and objective expectation of privacy. He exhibited a subjective expectation of privacy by not consenting to Sergeant Kunovich's search and seizure. As to the objective expectation of privacy, society is prepared to recognize reasonable suspicion or probable cause, but society will not tolerate a pretextual basis on race, color, national origin, or alienage only, like here. Now, police officers often have qualified immunity to do these things, right? Well, no, because, as they allege here, Qualified immunity is unavailable to Sergeant Kunovich because he conducted an unreasonable search and seizure in violation of Aguilar Mendez's Fourth Amendment rights that were clearly established at the time of the challenged action. Bound by the Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court, the Eleventh Circuit, or the, Sup the Florida Supreme Court. As a direct and proximate result of the acts and omissions described herein, Aguilar Mendez suffered humiliation, emotional distress, physical harm, loss of earnings, and general damages that resulted from being illegally stopped, searched, seized, and detained without justification in an amount to be determined by the jury. Wherefore, Plaintiff Virgilio Aguilar Mendez demands judgment against defendant, the personal representative of the estate of Michael Kunovich, and respectfully requests the entry of an order awarding Aguilar Mendez with nominal compensatory and special damages, reasonable attorney fees, costs of the action, prejudgment interest, and any other any such other further and different relief as the court deems appropriate. That's a great first count. There's a lot more counts where that first count came from. Uh, the officer violated his, his Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure. Well, let's see what the others did. This is count two. How are we doing on time here? Let me check the time. All right, we've, we've got about 40, 40 more minutes. We might, we might get through this. Good heavens. Huh. <laughs> I, I was just saying that someone was asking, uh, if, Steve, you, have you done a YouTube vid on the defense? And Steve says, uh, no, I'll let vices do it. I might say something not in the public record if I get going. Don't get going, Steve. Everybody relax. Everybody relax. No, nobody get going. All right. Violation of Fourth Amendment, false arrest or imprisonment, Civil Rights Act, 42 U.S.C., 1983 at SEC. Sergeant Michael Kunovich in his individual capacity, Detective Gavin Higgins in his individual capacity, and Detective George, George Montgomery in his individual capacity. Aguilar Mendez re-alleges the allegations set forth in paragraphs 8 through 112 and paragraphs 117 through 128 above, as though fully alleged herein. At all material times, Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery directly participated in violating Aguilar Mendez's Fourth Amendment rights. Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, Deputy Montgomery are persons within the meaning of the Civil Rights Act. Again, thank you so much for the Civil Rights Act to let us know whether these people are actually persons or non-person monsters. Apparently, they meet the legal definition of persons under the Civil Rights Act. So good for them. At all material times, they acted under color of state law as an agent of St. John's County and within the scope of their employment and authority as a duly certified law enforcement officer of the Sheriff's Office. Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, Deputy Montgomery seized Aguilar Mendez within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment when he terminated Aguilar Mendez's freedom of movement through means intentionally applied, making a false arrest or false imprisonment due to lack of probable cause. Sorry, whoa, that was a that was a hell of a jump, wasn't it? What the hell just happened? What what have we? How do we get back here already? Wow, um, whatever just happened happened. Let me we we jumped way up. 
That was that was odd. All right, let's let's get back to that. That was that was unexpected. All right, I I I think we're where we need to be now. Right. Uh, Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery made an unlawful detention and deprivation of liberty against Aguilar Mendez's will. Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery made an unreasonable detention which is not warranted under the circumstances. Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery made an intentional detention. Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery all were part of the arresting chain of command authorizing Aguilar Mendez's arrest. Qualified immunity is unavailable to Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery because they conducted an unlawful arrest in violation of Aguilar Mendez's Fourth Amendment rights that were clearly established at the time of the challenged action. Bound by, the, bound by the United States Supreme Court, the 11th Circuit, and Florida Supreme Court. As a direct proximate result, so as directly caused by the acts and omissions described herein, Aguilar Mendez suffered humiliation, emotional distress, physical harm, loss of earnings, and general damages that resulted from being illegally stopped, searched, seized, and detained without justification in an amount to be determined by the jury. Punitive damages are available against Sergeant Kunovich, Deputy Higgins, and Deputy Montgomery and are hereby claimed because they were reckless or had callous indifference to the federally protected rights of Aguilar Mendez. Wherefore, the plaintiff, Regilio Aguilar Mendez, demands judgment against the defendants, the personal representative of the estate of Michael Kunovich, Gavin Higgins and George Montgomery and respectfully request that an order awarding Aguilar Mendez with nominal, compensatory, special, and punitive damages, two reasonable attorney fees, three costs of the action, four prejudgment interest, and five any, uh, any such other further and different relief as the court deems appropriate. What, what dogs are out there on the veranda? All right, I think we... The, the dogs have returned. Let me very quickly turn my camera off so I can slide over and uh, readjust the, the lighting situation here. I shall return in an instant. I'm still here, just uh, no camera. <laughs> For reasons. All right, I have returned to the microphone. And my chair is caught on the floor. There we go. What the hell? I'm back. And there's there's Yoda and Strawberry just staring out into the into the wilderness. And here I am. Hi, everybody. The the return of the dogs. Let's look at count three. But before we do that, I wanted to read Cosmic Surgeon's five dollar super chat. Thank you so much. Your sympathy for the invader is disgusting. Did the government tell you he's legally in the country? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, actually, they did. They they issued a document that said that. He was in the immigration custody. They were He was released to the public pending his immigration status hearing, which is coming up in July. So, yeah, in fact, the uh, the federal government did tell us all, they, even you, whether you whether you agree with it or not, they did tell you that uh, he is legally in the country. And he uh, you, and you know, the federal government doesn't say that uh, visitors, tourists, uh, Illegal immigrants, illegal aliens. Uh, the the federal government doesn't tell us that they get the rights of a, of a citizen. The, the Constitution tells us that. The Constitution tells us that every person that's in the country, for whatever reason, however they got there and why ever they're here, they are given the protections of the Constitution. Pretty much essentially, except for Second Amendment rights, which is reserved for citizens. <sighs> So, yes, uh, to, to answer your, to answer your uh, I guess, sarcastic question, the answer actually is yes. The federal government did tell us that he, is, he was legally in the country at the time this went down and that he deserves the rights of the citizenry. That uh, the, the rights of the citizenry is the rights of the people which are guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States. So, yep, I, I am a good boy because I know what the law is. And I know that it apply how it applies. So, well, uh, gee, thanks for thanks for the five dollars, Cosmic Surgeon. You just happen to be 
Well, you, I mean, you can think my, you can think that my, for the invader, <laughs> your sympathy for the invader is disgusting. You can think that, but uh, on the other point, yes, the government did tell us he's legally in the country and he does deserve the rights that are guaranteed by the constitution. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, oh, wrong. The Constitution doesn't address illegals exclusively, and you're a bitch. Okay. Um, well, th thank you for, for that opinion, but read the Constitution again. I have. It talks about people. It doesn't exclusively limit it to... The only, the only place where it's limited to citizens is the Second Amendment. Everywhere else it refers to people as distinguished from citizens. Citizens... All people, all citizens are people, but not all people are citizens. So the protections guaranteed by the Constitution are much broader than the, you know, than just citizens of the United States. That might come as a shock to you and other people, but that's been the law for as long as the Constitution has existed. The protections are for the people, not just the citizens. That's a good chance for you to to educate yourself on this. I mean, whether you agree with me, I mean, you know, it's I don't make the laws. That's that's the laws. That's how it works. And that's the beauty of the Constitution. Otherwise, let's let's say you let's say you, you there's a country that doesn't give all people in their within their borders the same protections. As, as we're given in the United States. So let's say you're a tourist and you go to Askrakistan or someplace and you, you go to the country of Askrakistan as a tourist, but they don't guarantee you rights against illegal searches and seizures. And for no reason, they just roll up on you, throw you in jail for the rest of your life. What's your defense? You can't say, well, that's against your laws because they would say, well, your laws don't, our laws don't apply. You can't take a benefit of our laws and our protections because you're not a citizen of our country. That happens in a lot of places. Well, we're better than that in America. We apply the rights, the liberties, and the protections granted by the Constitution to all people within the borders. So tourists... Uh, people that are there on business, uh, even even whether you like it or not, people that come there illegally are granted these protections because that's what makes America and the Constitution of the United States of America such a great and fantastic institution. Righto. Um, and I mean, we can, we, 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 we can, we can nitpick and we can, you know, not like it, but that's the, that's the, the, the general gist of things. <laughs> and, and that's how we are. Again, there, I, I mentioned the second amendment, but there, there are other other things that are reserved for citizens. But by and large, I mean, the, these things are for the people. We, I think we need to do a constitution reading because lots of people talk about the constitution and what it means and what's in it and what's not in it. And they've never read it. They think they know what's in it, but they've never actually sat down and read the document. The, the, the very first words are, we the people of the United States. You can argue that that means citizens, but you can also argue that it just means people of the United States. You know, no person. There's there's all these words people, and then there's occasionally the citizen is thrown in. Read it. We should we should read the Constitution one of these days. And uh, yeah, that 
That'd be fun. But anyway, let's before we get too far off track, this bitch has got to get back onto, onto reading this. Speaking of bitches, what are the dogs doing? Because like strawberry is, is literally a bitch. All right. All right. This this bitch got to get back at it. Violation of the force of the Fourth Amendment. Excessive force, Civil Rights Act. This is count three against Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery in their individual capacities. Hmm. All right, hang on. I'm 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 think I'm thinking out loud here. I'm a bitch for my interpretation. Oh, oh well. So so be it. Me me and all the other bitches. We, we, <laughs> we're, we're, we're out there. Um, th thanks for that opinion, though. We, we like the opinions. We do we do need to have we do we do need to have a discussion about the Second Amendment, though, because it does you know. I think it, it doesn't say citizens. It says people, doesn't it? The right of the people to keep and bear shall not be infringed. But it's been interpreted. Anyway, hmm. interesting thought. Not what we're here to do today. Uh, but anywho, yeah, he gets protections of, <laughs> of the Constitution for the things that are being alleged here. AP, illegals now get Second Amendment rights. So there, now there's no difference between legal or illegal persons in the United States. Thanks, SCOTUS. Well, that's, there was a recent decision. Yeah. I forgot about that. I, I'm Sometimes I'm out of touch. Uh, Duncan, Idaho. <laughs> um, we have an immigration and border crisis right now, but it can't be solved at the level of sheriff's deputy and not in the way that they tried to. We still have to act like the United States. I could not agree with that sentiment more, Duncan, Idaho. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, AP, Duncan Ido, thank you so much. Yep, you are correct. It, it, it does say the, the, the rights of the people shall not be infringed right there in the Second Amendment. Uh, it, it, it was, it was, was it Illinois? Was it Illinois? It wasn't, it wasn't the, the Supreme Court of the U.S. Was it Illinois that said they can? <laughs> anyway, we're getting way off topic. One that I'm not prepared to discuss today. Um, yeah, I believe, I believe it was... It was uh, what are the Illinois courts? Uh, anywho, <laughs> way, way beyond, way beyond things here. I we need to. I need to get my my brain functioning here. <clears throat> okay, let's get back here. Man, this, this bitch got see for for all of the things and all of the all of the bad things that were said to me by cosmic surgeon the one thing that he did get that he did do was was trigger my adhd to go off <laughs> in, into rando land all right let's get back on this count 3 violation of the fourth amendment excessive force and, and Steve, Steve Gosney is declaring it's all caps day. Okay, everybody, it's all caps day. Steve Gosney has declared today all caps day so have at it, all capsers. <laughs> Aguilar Mendez re-alleges the allegations set forth in paragraphs 8 through 112, paragraphs 17 through 128, paragraphs 132 through 139 above, and as though fully alleged herein. Oh, Eileen, I was trying to start this, but now you've, you now you derailed me again, but I love you to death, Eileen. Uh, Eileen, $5 super chat. Uh, I know chat is off its rocker today, but did you just attack Princess Straubs and called her uncalled? No, I just said she's a bitch. It's like she literally is. It's like, you know, that's it. She's, she's you know, female dog. She's literally a bitch. So uncalled for, sir. She's an angel tater. She's an angel tater tot, but she's also a bitch angel tater tot. Whereas we have the sire, uh, Yoda, the, the, the sire angel tater tot over there. Uh, but Eileen, I'm sorry. Um, your, your, your super chat fails for two reasons. One, it wasn't in all caps. And two, you didn't call me a bitch. So next time, try again. Try harder. All caps. And this will for today only. 
<laughs> so, all right. Sergeant Kunovich conducted an unreasonable, thank you so much, Island, conducted an unreasonable seizure, taking into account all relevant circumstances that amounted un to unconstitutionally excessive force against Aguilar Mendez by using a taser gun six times. Deputy Higgins, Deputy Montgomery conducted an unreasonable seizure, taking into account all relevant circumstances that amounted to unconstitutionally excessive force against Aguilar Mendez by using a chokehold, pulling him from his throat, body slamming him, repeatedly hitting his left arm and left shoulder, and striking his knees multiple times. Kunovich, Higgins, Montgomery did not have a reasonable fear of imminent bodily harm when he tackled Aguilar Mendez to the ground, nor did they have a reasonable belief that any other person was in danger of imminent bodily danger from Aguilar Mendez. The body cam evidence reveals that Aguilar Mendez only resisted when Sergeant Kunovich conducted an unconstitutional search and seizure on Aguilar Mendez as a person. <clears throat> All right, I gotta, gotta keep a straight face here. You guys are cracking me up in chat. I, my peripheral vision is, is <laughs> you guys are making me laugh. This is a serious thing. I shouldn't be laughing. Uh, Starkey Sorsha, thank you so much, Starkey Sorsha, for being a member for six months. Look at six months. Thank you for covering this from one Cthulhu cultist to another. The, the old gods are watching. Uh, <laughs> again, you failed. It's not all in. It's not in all caps, and you didn't call me a bitch. Oh, he won't let you say bitch. Well. Uh, Cosmic Surgeon got around it by spelling it uh, B space space I C B space I T space C H or something like that. Just strategically place the space the uh, you know the word out a little bit. All right. The body cam evidence reveals that Aguilar Mendez only resisted when Sergeant Kunovich conducted an unconstitutional search and seizure on Aguilar Mendez's person. This does not qualify as active resistance. And the state attorney's office dismissed the charges of resisting a police officer through use of violence pursuant to Florida Statute 84301. The amount of force excre excreted, wow, <laughs> That's a good. That's a good use of the word excreted, uh, executed or used. Probably would have been the <laughs> probably would have been the word I used. But I like the thought of Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery excreting force. <laughs> I, I I like that. Oh. Uh, I like that one. The, the, the amount of force excreted by, by Kunovich. I'm not going <clears> to. <throat> oh, if someone breaks into Legal Vice's house, he would bake them a cake. Kind of a bitch thing to do. Oh, I highly doubt that's what the outcome would be. There's, there's no, no, no question what the outcome of that would be. But anyway, this does not qualify as active resistance. And they excreted an amount of force. The amount of force excreted. I know I've said this like five times. I just find that so cool. The amount of force excreted by Skunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery was unproportional to the force needed to subdue Aguilar Mendez. Aguilar Mendez did not attempt to hit any, any sheriff's officers. At best, he tried to cover the area on his own body where Kunovich repeatedly shocked him six times with a taser gun. Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery made no efforts to temper or to limit the amount of force, including no attempts to bridge the language gap for Aguilar Mendez, pursuant to Sheriff's Policy 8113, communications with deaf, hearing impaired, and limited efficient English proficiency, and Sheriff's Office Policy 1.8, response to resistance. Aguilar Mendez did not pose a serious security problem as he was not using any weapons against Sergeant Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery. A reasonable officer would have known that tasing a person six times without reasonable suspicion and probable cause constitutes a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, uh, someone who's not even an, an, an unreasonable person uh, would know that that constituted a violation of the Fourth Amendment, let alone a reasonable officer. In addition, a reasonable officer would have known that using a chokehold and beating a person without reasonable suspicion or probable cause constitutes a violation of the Fourth Amendment. 
Qualified immunity, Chad, qualified immunity is unavailable to Sergeant Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery because they used unconstitutionally excessive force in violation of Aguilar Mendez's Fourth Amendment rights that were clearly established at the time of the challenged action bound by United States Supreme Court, the 11th Circuit, and Florida Supreme Court. As a direct proximate result of the acts and omissions described herein, Aguilar Mendez suffered humiliation, emotional distress, physical harm, loss of earnings, and general damages that resulted from being illegally stopped, searched, seized, and detained without justification in an amount to be determined by the jury. Punitive damages are available against Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery and are hereby claimed because they were reckless or had callous indifference to the federally protected rights of Aguilar Mendez. Wherefore, plaintiff Virgilio Aguilar Mendez demands judgment against defendants the personal representative of the estate of Michael Kunovich, Gavin Higgins, and George Montgomery, and respectfully requests an entry of an order awarding Aguilar Mendez with normal, compensatory, special, and punitive damages, reasonable attorney's fees, costs of the action, pre-judgment interest, and any other such and any such other further and different relief as the court deems appropriate. <laughs> okay, people. All right, I get to these super chats. You guys are hilarious. Uh, <clears throat> Uh-oh, bad duck. How the hell did you do that? You're like upside down and backwards. That's pretty cool. I lack I lack the technology to do that. Um, all right, let's 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 read what some of these super chats that you have written. <laughs> uh, King Ginger wasn't the cop dispatched on a suspicious person report. No, he wasn't. Uh, so yeah, I know you're so like legitimate question. No, he was not dispatched. He he did this on his own authority. He said, "Oh, I, effectively, I see a brown person over here. Uh, I'm going to go talk to him." And then later they they lied and said that uh, it was on suspicion of trespassing. So yeah, they, he was not dispatched. He just went up there of his own free will. It, it was a self initiated uh, detention search and seizure. So again, no, no dispatch, no suspicious re person person was reported by anybody at all. Not even another police officer. He just went up there and immediately started saying stop and shouting and getting all shouty. Uh, but in the meantime, let's, let's see what happened while I was, while I was off doing my thing. Island. I know oh, we did that today. We, we almost gave you a twofer. Um, DCV Titan, or just type uh, bit, bitch little, bit, bitch little backwards, little bitch backwards. Uh, pussy, not the B word, but apparently, <laughs> okay, pussy, not the B word is apparently acceptable. Thank you, Legendary Racing, for figuring that out. I guess today we're, we're figuring out what's acceptable and what's not. Um, Jess Rubery, thank you so much for the ten dollars. Biatch, please, your ADHD rant had me reciting the beginning line of the Constitution in my head because I had a history teacher who required us to memorize it. That's a that's a very good thing to memorize. I, I can't remember. I had to remember it like a long time ago too. But yeah, <laughs> now, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, established it was in high school. Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, our posterity. Yeah, posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. And I, I used to have a couple of the articles memorized, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's posterity, right? Prosperity, posterity. I think it's posterity. Uh, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Jess Rubery, appreciate it. Legendary racing, corn, 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 lots of corn. All about the corn. <laughs> All right. Now, now we're caught up with, uh, with this so far. Uh, I had to memorize it in, it was in, in I believe, ninth grade because... I was in the uh, in the show choir, and we did an, an American review for the Fourth of July, and that was one of our that was one of our uh, introductions to our songs. We all recited the the opening of the Constitution. Yes, I was a show choir bitch in high school. <laughs> um, 
what was I going to do? I was going to do something. All right. I can't remember what I was going to do. So let's, uh, oh, I was going to zoom in the dog cam a little bit there just for you guys. All right. Let's get on with count four. We've still got 10, still got 10 counts to go. Uh, we've only got about 15 minutes left. So we'll, we'll wrap up the other, the, the remainder, whatever we don't get through today, we'll wrap it up um, either Friday or Tuesday of next week. Tomorrow, we're starting a new retro trial, which is going to be really cool. Did I ever tell you my the departed story, Steve Gosney? I have good reason to believe Chicago gangs have paid for and placed people in the prosecutor's office. Interesting theory. Uh, we know that they've they've placed people in the, in the United States military, so why not in the, and, and the police force? So why not in in positions such as that. Who knows? Interesting. All right. Count five, four, sorry. Count four, battery. Uh, Kunovich, Higgins, Montgomery in their individual capacities. Aguilar Mendez realleges the allegations set forth in paragraphs eight through 112 above as though fully here alleged herein. Kunovich, Higgins, Montgomery committed acts intending to cause harmful or offensive contact with Aguilar Mendez or causing Aguilar Mendez to be in imminent apprehension of such contact. Uh, yeah, they, they committed acts of, of contact most definitely. Uh, Kunovich, Higgins, Montgomery made offensive contact with Aguilar Mendez. As a direct and proximate result of the acts and omissions described herein, Aguilar Mendez suffered humiliation emotional distress, physical harm, loss of earnings, and general damages that resulted from being illegally stopped, searched, seized, and detained without justification in an amount to be determined by the jury. Punitive damages are available to Sergeant Kunovich. Uh, not to, against. <laughs> Punitive damages are available against Kunovich, Higgins, and Montgomery and are hereby claimed because they were reckless or had callous indifference to the federally protected rights of Aguilar. Wherefore, Plaintiff Virgilio Aguilar Mendez demands judgments against defendants, the personal representative of the estate of Michael Kunovich, Gavin Higgins, and George Montgomery, and respectfully requests an entry of an order awarding Aguilar Mendez with nominal, compensatory, special, and punitive damages, two, reasonable attorney's fees, three, the cost of the action, four, prejudgment interest, and five, any such other, further, and different relief as the court deems appropriate. I did not say Punovich, I said Kunovich. <laughs> I did not say that. When your mouth's get, getting dry, dry, you're plenty. High. I was speaking of my mouth getting dry. I've had this. I've had this this beautiful cup of Spanish red wine sitting here that I haven't even touched. Mm, thank you very much for reminding me, Boosh. Ah, that's so good. All right, <clears throat> count five. Have, <laughs> has chat settled down yet? All right. Chat seems to have settled down a little bit. Boy, we're feisty today. Violation of the 14th Amendment, Equal Protection Clause, the Civil Rights Act. Uh, this is only against Robert Hardwick and Michael Kunovich. Hardwick, the sheriff, in his official capacity, and Kunovich in his individual capacity. Violation of the Equal Protection Clause. Uh, but first, Duncan Idaho has just dropped five Legal Vices memberships, gifted five Legal Vices memberships. If you got one of these five Legal Vices memberships, please make sure you give Duncan Idaho a super special thanks. And I hope to God Cosmic Surgeon got one, because that would be awesome. Uh, oh, no, it was Michael Berg. Smopo Vienna, Homestead Dreams, Ono Wall, and Lois Thomas. Make sure you make sure you give Duncan Idaho a super special thanks. You guys rock. Congratulations. Uh, we had a we had a members only stream just over the last weekend. So if you want to go back and check that out, you can go back and see, you can access it now because you're members. You're you are my member. Everybody wants to be my member. Um, so can't go back and we'll be doing another one soon. I, I like that. It was, it was a fun, just kind of chill stream. Violation of the 14th amendment. Aguilar Mendez realleges the allegations set forth in paragraphs eight through 112 above as though fully alleged herein. 
Sheriff Hardwick is the final policymaker for the sheriff's office with regard to establishing policies, customs, and training programs governing the conduct of, of sheriff's officers performing policing functions on behalf of the county. St. John's County Sheriff Hardwick and Sergeant Kunovich are persons within the meaning of the Civil Rights Act. Well, I guess if we can just, if we can call a county a person, then I suppose we could call Kunovich a person. At all material times, Sheriff Hardwick and Sergeant Kunovich, excuse me, acted under color of state law as an agent of St. John's County and within the scope of his employment and authority as a duly certified law enforcement officer of the Sheriff's Office. At all material times, Sergeant Kunovich acted as a sergeant and directly participated in violating Aguilar Mendez's 4th and 14th Amendment rights. He violated Aguilar Mendez's 4th Amendment rights by conducting an illegal search and seizure of, Ag of Aguilar Mendez's person due to the lack of reasonable suspicion or probable cause for any crime. He violated Aguilar Mendez's 14th Amendment rights by illegally discriminating between non-citizens and citizens with regard in, in regard with reasonable suspicions. So I guess if, if you're going to violate one right, you should at least violate other rights. So you know, if you're, if you're going to get hammered, you just nail another, just nail another nail in that coffin, I guess. Right. Well. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at something here real quick. Do, 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 do. Just a second. Okay. I just I, I, I had to had to had to check something there. It was my own personal little brain freeze. He violated Mendez's 14th Amendment rights by illegally discriminating between non-citizens and citizens in regard with reasonable suspicion. Aguilar Mendez is not a citizen. According to the express bias policing policy. It is the policy of St. John's County Sheriff's Office to patrol in a proactive manner to aggressively investigate suspicious persons and circumstances and to actively enforce the motor vehicle laws. It also it is also the policy that citizens will only be stopped or detained where there exists a reasonable suspicion to believe they have committed, are committing, or are about to commit an infraction of the law. It is proactive, it is this proactive enforcement that keeps our citizens, our streets, and our highways safer. It also enables us in detecting and apprehending criminals. All laws shall be enforced equally regardless of race, color, ethnicity, sex, physical handicap, or religion, and biased policing shall not be tolerated in enforcement efforts. The standard is established in accordance with Florida Statute 3015. Sheriff's Office policies prohibit, prohibit biased policing, and members are responsible for ensuring that all citizens in the community are treated with dignity and respect. St. John's County bias policing policy differs from other Florida counties. For example, Orange County. Biased bias based profiling. The decision by a deputy to stop, detain, interdict, or search an individual. Notice it doesn't say citizen. It says an individual. An individual based on the race, color, ethnicity, background, gender, national origin, sexual orientation, gender, identity, slash expression, economic status, age, culture, physical handicap, immigration status, housing status, occupation, language fluency, religion, or other belief system, or any physical or personal characteristic. SJCSO. The Sheriff's Office Express Bias Policy Bias policing policy is facially unconstitutional. I was waiting for this part because it is an official action that explicitly draws suspect classifications so strict scrutiny applies. It's the classification between citizen and non-citizen. So you have to strictly we have to strictly scrutinize this uh, this policy. Aguilar Mendez is a member of a suspect class, alienage and national origin. Oh no, burning sensation. You actually <laughs> you actually changed your profile name from Bunning Sensation to Burning Sensation? Uh, that's funny. Uh, thank you so much for the one euro. That is deeply, deeply appreciated. Uh, it was it was it was an empty one euro. Oh, wait, what? Or is someone taking over? But it was 
It says it's your your first super chat on a live stream. I happen to know that's not true unless uh, unless it's a new account or someone is imitating bunny sensations. Mm, clever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you change. That's funny. All right. Um, so they're saying that it's it's uncon it's facially unconstitutional to create policies that. Uh, distinguish between citizens and non-citizens in this regard. He's a member of a suspect class, alienage and national origin. The Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of the United States commands that St. John's County, Hardwick, and Kunovich may not deny to any person within his jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. And uh, let's I just happen to have the 14th Amendment pulled up right here. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the states wherein they reside. So that's that defines what a citizen is. Then the next sentence is, No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens. So the privileges and immunities of citizens cannot be abridged by law. Nor, so separate from these, from the privileges and immunities of the 14th Amendment, uh, I mean, that are granted under the 14th Amendment to citizens, it differentiates and says, nor shall any state deprive any person, not any citizen, the state, you know, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person, again, not, not to any citizen, shall not deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So to if you're, if you're born or naturalized in the U.S., congratulations, you're a citizen under the Constitution. And the state cannot abridge your privileges and immunities of your of, of you as a citizen of the United States. And then completely separate from that, no person, regardless of citizen or not, shall be deprived of life, liberty, property without due process. Nor any person, regardless of citizen or not, uh, shall be denied equal protection under the laws. The sheriff's county, the, the sheriff's office expressed bias policy, bias policing policy only protects citizens, which is unconstitutional. Ghostry says, wait, burning sensation wasn't always spelled burning. No, it was, it was bunning sensation. <laughs> Sergeant Kunovich stopped, searched, and seized Aguilar Mendez in light of bias policing policy, and the policy was the moving force of Aguilar Mendez's in injury. So they're saying, hey, he wasn't, if, if he was a citizen, he would have been protected against what they did. But uh, he's saying the, the uh, sheriff's office treated him the way they did because he's not a citizen and therefore under their policy is not afforded the protections that the sheriff's office policy gave, which they're saying is absolutely unconstitutional and an improper thing to do. So the, the sheriff's office bias policing policy only protects citizens, which is unconstitutional. They stopped, searched, seized Mendez in light of the, of the policy, and the policy was the moving factor. 177, Sergeant Kunovich ignored the Fourth Amendment and did not attempt to find reasonable suspicion because St. John's County had already endorsed that the bias policing policy only protects citizens, not persons. Under the Equal Protection Clause, Sergeant Kunovich should, should have treated Aguilar Mendez no different than any person because he is similar situated, similarly situated, given that the Fourth Amendment applies to persons, not citizens. As a direct and proximate result of the acts and omissions described herein, Aguilar Mendez suffered humiliation, emotional distress, physical harm, loss of earnings, and general damages that resulted from being illegally stopped, searched, seized, and detained without justification in an amount to be determined by the jury. So, based on these allegations, under this charge... Uh, wherefore, Plaintiff Virgilio Aguilar Mendez demands judgment against... Defendant St. John's County, a political subdivision of the state of Florida, Robert Hardwick, and the personal representative of the state of Michael Kunovich, and respectfully requests 
the entry of an order awarding Aguilar Mendez with one nominal compensatory and special damages, again, no punitive in this case, reasonable attorney's fees, cost of the action, prejudgment interest, and any other such further and different relief as the court deems appropriate. Uh, we will pick this up with count six next time. Uh, this is where we're going to wrap this up today. We've done our two hours. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this and, and a few other things uh, relating to this either on Friday or Tuesday. I, I, I'll have to see what, what schedule looks like. Could be Friday evening, could be Tuesday morning. It'll be, it'll be one of the two. I'm leaning towards next Tuesday, but that's kind of a long time to wait. So I'm, I'm deciding. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we, we definitely will finish it. We will have part two to this. This is a this is a powerful a powerful lawsuit. It's a powerful federal lawsuit. <laughs> MG Law Jeff is a corn star, right? <laughs> As we can see from the chat today, it, this this particular issue tends to get people a little bit uh, a little bit animated. I'm I'm glad that uh, with it, with the exception of a few glitches. We were, we were, we were, we were well behaved today. Uh, e even with our dissenting opinions from, uh, was it Cosmic Surgeon? Was that what it was? Cosmic Surgeon? Yeah, okay. Uh, even, even Cosmic Surgeon, we, we appreciate that. Uh, Cosmic, uh, Flux says, Cosmic Surgeon, you're okay calling Jeff a bitch, but can't answer a question in chat. Lamau, you're now now flux. I was just complimenting everybody on how on how well behaved we were and how calm, cool, and relaxed everything had got. Now 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 flux is poking the damn bear again. <laughs> flux, don't don't make me come over there. All right, now, I'm going to send you off somewhere. Let's see where I can send you off to. I don't know where I can send you off to because I don't know who's doing what right now. So let me quickly bring up the. Uh, the redirect page, and then we'll, we'll talk you through what's going to be happening over the next few days. Um, okay, here's me. Go to the studio. We're in the studio. Content. Today's stream. I'm thinking out loud so you guys just don't have to watch me sit here through dead air. Uh, today's show is right there. Customization. Redirect. And uh, huh. Well, shoot. Um, guess there's really nowhere to send you right now. I, I don't see anybody showing up on my redirect page. So, okay, everybody, uh, that's what we'll. That's what we'll do here. We'll just wrap it up here. Tomorrow, we're starting a new trial. We, every Thursday, we do a retro trial where we go back into history and we look at a particularly interesting case, whether it's an interesting subject matter, or whether it has interesting lawyers and interesting arguments. Uh, we've been doing O.J. Simpson for the last year and a half. <clears throat> we finished that up last week. And now we're starting a new trial. The new trial we're starting is a very, very interesting case. Also out of Florida, by the way, it's a you know, Florida man strikes again in the, in this particular case. It is the case of Donald Hartung, who was a, an older gentleman who allegedly murdered his uh, two half brothers and his mother in what is described by the prosecutor's office as a ritualistic witchcraft style murder. So we're going to start that case. We're going to cover this case gavel to gavel because it was a relatively short case. It'll take us several months to get through just doing it on Tuesdays. I mean, on Thursdays. But that's we're going to start that tomorrow. And then Friday, I will most likely uh, do an update on something else. I'm, I'm leaning towards Tuesday to do part two of this. Next Monday will, will be our Maritime Monday. We do that every Monday. We're going to do a catch up and get the latest news on the, the Baltimore the bridge in Baltimore, the key bridge that collapsed yesterday. We'll do what we know so far, an update on next Monday for our Maritime Monday stream. And the next Tuesday, we'll probably do part two of this. So, all right, everybody, thank you so much. But let's see how our poll ended up, shall we? 
Uh, the like and subscribe poll. How many zeros should be at the end of the Mendez suit? 18% of you say none, give him nothing. 14% say there should be five zeros at the end. 17% say there should be six zeros at the end. And 15, 51% say he should get all of the zeros. All of the zeros should be added to the end of his, of his award. Uh, that's that's the poll today. Again, those little like and subscribe polls are just to remind people to like and subscribe. There's no other reason. <laughs> and the 355 people, of you, the 355 of you that are here, uh, thank you so much for being here right up to the end. 380 likes on your way out. Make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, I would I would ask you to please consider doing so. Even you, Cosmic Surgeon, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. You know, hate watches or, or watches as well. You know, hate views count. Uh, but I, you know, please, I challenge you, Cosmic Surgeon, hit that subscribe button. Costs you nothing. Uh, I mean, then you can come here every day. Uh, LC, what's up? Shopu, hey, how you doing, brother? You got here just at the very, very end as we shut this down. Love to see here, LC in the house, the legendary Ozzy himself, Lincoln K. Welcome. All right, everybody. Mods, thank you for being here. <laughs> Cosmic Search, I love you, brother. See, we can disagree. New member, everybody, say welcome to Cosmic Surgeon, our newest member of the Clean and Sober crew. We love you, Cosmic Surgeon. You're a good man. I disagree with a lot of what you say, but uh, you're 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 a good man. We love having you here. Thank you so much for doing that. So, um, all right. See, you're part. You're part of the Vice Squad now. And Lincoln Kane, uh, I only have dogs, so I can I can only show dog Jeffrey Lincoln Kane. Thank you so much. And before Lincoln Kane sends another super chat, <laughs> everybody, thank you mods for being here. Love you to death. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you for doing everything, mods chat. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the, uh, the the support. Thank you for the super chats, the gifted memberships. Thank you for the the paid for memberships, the monthly memberships. Thank you so much, Cosmic Surgeon, for taking the jump, taking the leap of faith. Clean and sober crew is the is the best clean and sober crew. Member for thirteen months, Ginger, wrapping us up. King Ginger three. Thir King Ginger 333, 13 month. Woo. I still have 121 characters to fill. So this is going to be a long chat that has no real purpose. Love you all. Even if you hate me, lol. Uh, Lincoln Kane says, I think we're alone now. I'm halfway tempted just to keep the stream going so that Lincoln Kane can continue to send random super chats. But <laughs> we do need to wrap this up because I do need to go to work. Lincoln Kane, love you, buddy. Thanks. All right. For the millionth time, I'm leaving. <laughs> Everybody, you're free to go. We'll see you all tomorrow for the beginning of the new trial. The new trial will start tomorrow. The Hartung case, the witchcraft, ritualistic murder. Uh, Duncan Idaho, send more. Keep him reading. No, I really want to escape. I love money, and I love it when you send me money, but it is 12.20 a.m., and I do need to get some sleep. So thank you, everybody. Quickly, if you send a super chat now, it's not getting read. Um, right. <laughs> We'll see you all tomorrow. Love you guys. Take care. Legal Vices saying goodbye. I'm going to give you an outro. I almost just did a cold out, but let's go. <laughs>